Good afternoon. Welcome to probably the last video of this year for this channel. Maybe I'll do another one because I've had an idea for a video for quite some time now. Um, but I don't have time. I don't have time to record. I haven't. This is the first video in three months, I think. I don't have time to shave anymore. I don't have time to cut my hair. So um, the, the joys of fatherhood. Anyway, I wanted to do this video um, before the end of the year because I wanted to show you two, two things and I wanted to answer a question that was asked uh, in a comment of another video. Um, the first thing I want to show I think is quite practical uh, because it's how to generate an Excel file, an Excel workbook from within R. There are several ways to do it, so this is not the only way. This is um, this what I'm going to show you uh, will focus on just uh, putting data and images inside a workbook. But there are ways where you can uh, actually, and I've blogged about it, you can even go to the level of the cell and really say, okay, on this cell, I want this cell to be uh, green. Uh, I want it to have this formula, etc., etc. So this uses another package. I might do a video about that one uh, as well, but um, this one is a, a bit simpler. But I think it's quite useful. Uh, I use that at work uh, to generate uh, documents, Excel documents, especially if I have to do them like on a weekly basis or or on a monthly basis or whatever. I write an R script to generate this Excel workbook. Um, it's a lot less work uh, this way. It's easier to test. It's easier to debug, and um, yeah, it makes my life easier. So um, th this video will focus on that, and I will also uh, show you another function from the Perl package. That uh, if you already know the map function, it's very very similar to the map function. It has one slight difference uh, in very practical terms. Um, it's only really useful in very specific situations. This is one of them, but you know, let's let's let's. See. So let's first start by imagining that I have four data sets, okay, and I want to just have an Excel workbook where I save each of these data sets inside one sheet. Of course, these are some basic data sets that come with R, but it can be anything. Uh, it could also be the result of uh, some uh, pipe operations, of some group by operation, some summarize operation. You do that all within R, and then you just save the end result in an Excel uh, workbook. And so I want to save these four data sets inside four sheets. So I create two lists. I create a list of data sets, and I create a list of uh, names, right? So if, if you look at that, so the first one is quite uh, you know quite easy to understand what is going on, and li list sheets it's literally just sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. So those are the names. Of course, it could be anything else. It could be the names of the um, of the data sets. Could be whatever whatever you need. Then I create an empty workbook, okay, with the function create workbook from the open XLS X package. So this package here, uh, over here on here on the first line. This one is the package that will allow us to save all of these um, data sets inside our workbook. Then it's I need to initialize the workbook uh, with create workbook, and then I need to initialize every sheet within that workbook. So to do that, I use the function add worksheet. Okay, the idea would be, uh, or without without functional programming. You you do that one by one. So you you then you first write add worksheet, your workbook, then sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and sheet four. But if you have fifty sheets, that gets very tedious. So we we will map over the list of sheets. However, we will not map over them. So usually you have here a map instead of walk, right? But we will walk over them. So what is the difference between map and walk? Both do the same thing in that they uh, apply a function over each element of a sheet, okay? So just as a reminder, uh, if you do something like, uh, let's take list sheets again, and if you do something like map, I think it's to upper or to upper like this. Yeah, so if you map the to upper function to the list of sheets, every sheet name gets converted to uppercase, right? So map does that. Walk does the same thing, but there is a difference. Actually, I'm not even sure this. Yeah, this will this will work, I think. No, it won't. 
So what is the difference between map and walk? So walk wants functions or needs functions over here instead of two upper, for example, it needs a function with a side effect. So a side effect, when it, we, we say that a function has a side effect when it does something outside of its scope. So for example, a function that will uh, write to your hard disk that will create, for example, a plot, this function actually does not return anything. Okay, it doesn't return an object, it doesn't, it just writes something to your hard disk or a function that would show you something on, on the screen, that's also a side effect, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't return an object, doesn't return a, whatever, a data frame or, or a ggplot object. It actually shows you that on the screen or it writes it on disk. So this is a side effect. Usually uh, that's something that we want to avoid. So for example, if you write a function that returns an object, but which at the same time changes some value uh, in the global environment. So for example, it increments a counter by one. So it does two things. So it, it creates whatever operation and then it increments that counter. That counter is saved somewhere in the global environment. It gets increased. So this is also a side effect. And this is usually the type of thing we want to avoid because side effects uh, are usually quite difficult to manage because the, they can, the, there can be interactions between these functions. Uh, and all their side effects, uh, and if it, all your functions have several side effects, it can get very messy very quickly. So usually it's something we try to avoid, but of course, um, writing to disk, that's a thing that you have to do. Uh, it's not like you can just say, well, I'm not writing to disk anything ever. So these functions have a side effect. So for that, you have to use walk. Well, I mean, you could use map as well, but sometimes it doesn't work. And to be Completely honest with you, I haven't really still understood why sometimes it seems to work and why sometimes it doesn't seem to work. I have had examples, I have had situations where I just use a map out of habit and it works. But I've also had the reverse, so where I use map and it doesn't work. So I would say try to use map every time. If you see that it's not working um, and if your function is, for, for example, writing something to disk, usually that's a good example, then try walk and then it should work. Okay, so I know it's not the perfect explanation, um, but yeah, just bear with me. Anyway, walk. Why walk? Because actually this, um, this add worksheet function is not returning anything. It's changing your Excel workbook in place and your Excel workbook still does not exist, right, in your hard disk at this point. It's just a variable that has been initialized and you're just adding uh, sheets that don't really exist yet, okay? Those sheets, they will be empty, as I write here, and nothing is stored on your hard disk yet, all right? So this function here just changes something outside of its scope. It changes the Excel workbook, that's it. So that's why walk here works, okay? So let's, uh, let's do that, actually. Maybe I'll have an error message yeah, uh, I'll have an error message just because I've already run the code before the function. So, um, you know, the, the OpenXLS X package is telling me, look, you already have this workbook and this, this workbook already has, um, has, a, has a sheet name called sheet one. But of course, if you, yeah, now I need to, to rerun this. I need to reinitialize and I need to rerun this. Now it's fine, okay? So this is just because before uh, filming the video, I already had run the code. But uh, if you're running this for the first time, you can totally ignore this error, you won't, you won't get it. So I initialize my workbook and I add my worksheets, okay? Maybe let's try to see what happens if I look at my Excel workbook now. Yeah, okay, so you see, you have a workbook object with uh, four sheets and there's, an, uh, there's a write order, and the active sheet is uh, the first sheet and position in one. I guess this uh, means uh, that whatever we'll write will be written on the uh, top uh, left, which will be the A1 cell, and this will then populate from the A1 cell, because I think there's an argument here that uh, you can specify the position. Anyway, walk, map, roughly the same thing, Walk focuses on functions that change stuff outside their scope, meaning functions with side effects. Usually, in most cases I had to deal with functions that write to disk. So if, if you want to do something like that, and you could, you know, 
you could be mapping a list of data sets to write CSV, for example, write.csv, you'd use walk as well, okay? Because there you're doing the same. Now, just to show you uh, another uh, functionality of, um, of this package, I'm just adding a plot there, okay? This has nothing to do with walk uh, as such, but I'm just plotting this uh, UK driver devs, and I'm saving that on my disk. So this again here, uh, this is doing something. So this plot function, it's also a function with um, a side effect, which is showing something on your screen. Okay. And with this thing with PNG, so I start the PNG device and then I turn it off. This writes the plot to disk. Okay. This is kind of the uh, base way of saving plots in R. Uh, but this plot function uh, also changes something outside of its scope because it shows something on screen. Okay. Uh, here again, if you want to show successive plots on screen, you would use walk. Okay, uh, here I save this on my hard disk and I add a new uh, worksheet, okay, sheet number five. I could have named it uh, plot, UK driver's plot or whatever. Now comes the last bit of this video. I'm going to actually write the data on each sheet. And to do that, I need a function called write data, which is again a function of the open XLSX package. And I need to give to this function my workbook, which is over here. And then for each sheet, I need to say what I want to write on it. So it's kind of similar to what I do here, but I just need to specify, okay, on sheet one, I want to add my first data set, which is empty cars. On sheet two, I want to add cars. On sheet three, I want to add seat belts, etc. Again, because I don't want to have to write this by hand, Okay, like, like here in my comment, I use walk. But now I need to walk over two lists because I need to walk over the list of sheets and I need to walk over the list of data. And why? Because I'm going to call this function write data over, this, over the elements of these two lists. So I start on the two lists first. So sheet one, empty cars. Then sheet two, cars. Then sheet three, whatever the data set was, etc., etc. So I'm mapping or I'm walking over them in parallel. So that's what walk two does. Okay? Walk one, you have one list and you map one function over each element of that list. Walk two or map two, you have one function that takes two arguments and you map over these two arguments. So you map over the to each list and over each individual element of that list. Okay, so this is maybe a bit more complicated. So play around with this, try to change these functions. For example, instead of write data, use another function which takes several arguments and try to map over lists of them. Try to play a bit around with it. The way it works is that you specify a first argument called dot x, oh, this is your first list, dot y, this is your second list. Then you call your function with a little tilde, so this is a formula, and it gets converted by walk or by map into a function. So I, this is some topics that I already covered. I will link other videos in the description where I go into more details. And then your workbook. So this is a constant in a sense, okay? You, you don't map over a list of workbooks. But then you say, okay, the argument sheet takes dot x. So here what this means is, okay, the each element of list sheets and then x, which is, well, this is a bit, uh, it's not a great name, but write data. As you can see on the bottom, on the here on the bottom of the screen, uh, write data takes a WB argument, which is the workbook, a sheet argument, which is the name of the sheet, and an X argument, which is the um, the, the data set. Okay, so X is the data set. So X will be each element of that Y, meaning each element of list data successively. And then, uh, uh, so I, I will let this run uh, just afterwards, but then I also insert my image. Uh, and to insert my image, I use the function insert image. And as you see, it's the exact same structure. You have a workbook, you have a sheet, so this will go on sheet five, and you have a file called UK driver staff. If I had 10 images, I would use the same trick as here above, okay? I would walk over the function called insert image and over a list of image paths and a list of sheets, okay? It would be exactly the same. And then finally, I save my workbook and I overwrite because I already have it on disk. So I want to show you um, 
I, I just want to overwrite. You could, of course, I think by default this is false, which is something you might want to do if you don't want to risk take the risk to you know overwrite by mistake, some kind of report. So yeah, so let's uh, let's run this. So this I already run. Let's go with this. So I run everything. Oh yeah, uh, this sheet already exists. Yeah, I guess that's because I I ran the code again, but uh, that shouldn't be an issue. So I open my uh, spreadsheet application and i'll take a look and here we have it so the first one sheet one has the empty cars data set sheet two has the cars data set and so on and so forth and finally sheet five has the image so this is really this is really something that i like to use um because just like me i guess your uh, your colleagues your uh, your your bosses or your managers etc probably are familiar with Excel, um, and they sometimes they like to to you know to have some filters because then what you could do well I already closed my my spreadsheet application but what, what you could then of course do um, let me just open this again you could then you know you, you do the you do this with R and then you add maybe some finishing touches you add uh, a filter for the for these uh, columns you you add maybe some colors etc this you you have to do manually. Um, but it's not a lot of work, um, and then you know you can send that as an email attachment, for example, to to a, to a manager or whatever. Um, the advantage of, of using R to script an, uh, an Excel workbook is again you can it's easier to debug, it's easier to test, uh, it's a lot less work if you, if it's something that you have to rerun like every week or every day even. Um, it's not, you just have to rerun a script instead of doing everything by hand, copy pasting tables and 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 creating uh, plots with with, um, with Excel. So I, I, I really like that. Um, there are other things that you could do and you could of course do an R markdown document that you could knit, knit into uh, an HTML file with some dynamic JavaScript tables and things like that. So this I've also written a blog about that. Sometimes I do that as well. Uh, so I call them like I call them uh, serverless dashboards in a sense. So this is an HTML dashboard um, where you don't need a shiny server because everything is inside self-contained inside the HTML and just uses JavaScript to kind of show images and uh, filter, etc. But sometimes an Excel workbook is what you need, and I think this is uh, probably the best way of working with Excel because it, uh, it avoids actually having to work with Excel. So. I would really advise that you, you actually try this out. Um, as I said, I will link another, um, I think I actually did a video already about that, but I will link at least a blog post about another package called Tidy Excel, which allows you to really go at the level of the cell and to really uh, work at a very fine grained level on your uh, Excel workbooks and worksheets. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and I wish you a Happy New Year. I might do another video. Uh, I, this would be a special video. It wouldn't be a tutorial. It would be something else entirely that I've been thinking about and kind of working on on and off for the past months. But we'll see. If my kids let me sleep, maybe you'll get it. Anyway, uh, Happy New Year and stay safe.